Okay, let's go through setting up our servos for this build. Um, and this information will apply for uh, any time you're doing any kind of build like this and using these kind of servos. This is an Emax ES08 MA2 uh, analog metal gear servo. They sell plastic gear servos too, they're a little bit cheaper, but um, I don't like them as much as the uh, metal gear, they're more prone to failure um, and in my experience not even working right out of the box. So anyway, spend an extra dollar or two and get the Metal Gear servo here from Emacs. So anyway, this is your servo. This comes in the box. Uh, and then this is a little kit of parts here. So we'll open that up. I'll dump this out and explain what we have here. So these are the various arms that you can use. Um, in our application um, today, we don't use either one of these. I'll show you a little trick. This is um, the arm that we use for our rudder, elevator, ailerons. If you're going to put flaps on these, you would use the same. But anyway, this little forearm um, control link uh, we can manipulate it to serve our purposes better or to be a replacement arm should we need it. So all I'm going to do is cut off three of the arms. And now after you cut off those three arms you have a spare, a spare arm. It's not quite as long but in a pinch it will do the trick. No problem. I'm going to set that aside. Now I'm going to show you how to center your servo here. Um, so here's your servo. Here's your servo wires here. You've got your the yellow wire is your signal. The red wire is your power wire, your positive wire, which is carrying the five volts to operate the servo. And then the bottom one is usually brown or black, and that's our negative. I'm going to plug that in here to our servo tester, and um, signal goes on top, positive and a negative. So that gets installed just like this. And before I turn this on, here is our fuselage for the Bennett. This servo, I'm going to install, let's see which way do I want to install this. I'm going to install it like this today. It can be installed either way. It's really up to you. There's no right or wrong reason we can install it like that. Or we could install it like that. No right, right way to do it. So anyway, I'm going to take my arm here, put it on there straight up and down as possible and now we're going to check to make sure that it's centered so I'm going to turn my servo checker on here um, this first light you'll see is illuminated and that first light corresponds to the rheostat here so I can exercise the servo through its full range of motion which I think is 140 150 degrees, I forget exactly, but more than enough for what we're going to be using it for. Uh, the next position, that is just running a servo test to run it through its full range of motion there. The center light there, when the center position is lit, that is our mechanical center of our servo. So we'll see here, I can manipulate our arm around a little bit, and you see it's still kind of crooked there go to that last position and that is probably about as straight up and down as we're going to get but uh, that's absolutely just fine for what we're doing here so well, I still got it connected to the servo checker I'll go through the screws here real quick we've got these screws here and these screws have a tip on them these screws are meant for going through the flange here on the servo 
and connecting to maybe a, a housing of some type or a piece of wood or a piece of plastic. Um, we'd utilize these if we were going to secure this uh, servo if it was going into a piece of wood or plastic. Our application is going into foam and we're going to use hot glue so we don't use those screws at all. These two flat um, screws, machine screws that don't have a tip, those get installed or just one of them, they give you two I guess in case you lose one because they're so small. Get installed right here. I'll get my screwdriver here. Uh, it's actually easier. I was doing that the hard way. Just get your screws started and then I hold it with my fingernail and then put it in place and start to turn. And just go tight. You don't have to over tighten it because you'll easily strip those out. And now our servo is ready to be installed on our fuselage. But before we do that, I like to install a push rod or at least get the push rod through the hole. So the first thing I'll do is try to see, because these things are all manufactured to a slightly different tolerance. These are one millimeter push rods and that is not going at all. So there's two techniques that we can use to get that push rod in there. Uh, I got a small drill bit here. This is a 1 16th drill bit. I'm going to put that into the drill here. And then I'm just going to put that into the hole there. Get it started. Man, that's even. And drill it through. And now my push rod is connected. Um, another way to do this, here's one of the spares. If your push rod's not going through, another thing you can do is I happen to have my propane torch here. So you can use propane torch or just a lighter or a match or whatever. And just heat up the tip of the push rod just a little bit. Just enough. You don't want to make it blazing hot. And push it through. And that'll give you like the perfect size hole for pushing the rod through there. So that's just one te two techniques. Actually, I showed you three. You can at first try to push this through. So that's what you can do to get your push rod through there.